Hey, welcome to Let's Get Here, everyone. Today we are discussing a new study on dutasteride's efficacy and safety twice a week, three times a week versus daily finasteride. And its objective was to evaluate efficacy and safety between these two 5-alpha reductase inhibitors for treatments of androgenetic alopecia. So it was a randomized, investigator-blind, active-controlled pilot study with a three-arm parallel group. So they did not include any placebo group, but the investigators who were assessing the images of the dutasteride or finasteride users did not know whether it's a finasteride or dutasteride user and thus couldn't be biased. They enrolled men aged 20 to 60 years with mild to moderate androgenetic alopecia type 3 to type 5 on Hamilton Norwood scale. They exclude anybody with significant health problems, also history of depression and family history of prostate or breast cancer in the first degree relatives. Also additional exclusions, very important, anybody who has been previously using dutasteride or oral finasteride within 12 months in the past, they were all excluded. Also any users of other oral medications for hair loss have been excluded. So they obtained trichoscopic images from the vertex area in all participants at baseline and after 24 weeks of treatment. They used 50 times magnification, video thermoscope from foliscope antigen, and then the software was able to analyze the hair counts. So in total, 108 men were screened for eligibility in the study, but only 60 of them were divided further into dutasteride twice a week group with 20 people, dutasteride three times a week group with 20 people, and also finasteride once daily group with 20 members. Now we can also notice that in the dutasteride twice a week group, one person dropped out and also in the finasteride group, one person discontinued due to sexual adverse event. But more about this later. First, let's have a look at the results. What we can see here are the changes from baseline in hair density and hair diameter. Here I'd like to also note that all of the values for total hair counts, terminal hair counts, and also for hair diameters are statistically significant. So back to the comparison graphic, and I'm going to call the darkest color the dark orange, then the middle one will be orange and light orange. What stands out immediately is the performance of Dutasteride 0.5 milligram thrice weekly, three times a week, 0.5 milligram dutasteride. Essentially, you are microdosing dutasteride here. And the subjects got the best improvement in terminal hair count, which is probably the most important metric when evaluating hair regrowth effects of any treatment. The second one comes finasteride one milligram every day. And after that, dutasteride 0.5 milligram twice a week. Now, the second important metric when it comes down to the performance of the hair loss drugs on hair regrowth or improving the hair appearance would be how good are they able to thicken the hair? We see that the best one again is dutasteride 0.5 milligram three times a week. There was able to improve the diameter by 5.88 microns on average. The second best was finasteride seven times a week, improvement by 4.66 microns. And the last one was dutasteride 0.5 milligram twice a week with an improvement of 2.58 microns. And here we can also see an interesting phenomenon going on with dutasteride and finasteride. And it will be that the total hair count improvements, the dark orange color, are actually increasing at the much slower pace than the terminal hair count. And that means that dutasteride or finasteride are literally not regrowing any new hair. They're thickening your vellus non-terminal hairs more than they're actually growing new hairs from scratch. Now, if you look at the blinded global photographic assessments, where the scientists were actually evaluating the different cases without knowing which case was dutasteride twice a week, dutasteride three times a week, or finasteride seven times a week, this is how they, they were able to evaluate it. So visually, they saw a slight deterioration with one subject, and that was somebody who has been in the finasteride seven times a week group. They saw no change with a quite a few individuals individuals 
it was almost 30% of the total subjects. Where the scientists agreed the most would be probably the fact that the majority of the study participants showed only slight improvement across all of the groups, finasteride, dutasteride, twice or three times a week. We see the best results being produced and also confirmed visually by the scientists looking at that in the dutasteride 0.5 milligram three times a week group, followed by do test right 0.5 milligram twice a week group and then lastly finasteride seven times a week group and then if we look at marked improvement this is what only five subjects of the study were able to achieve five out of 60 subjects it's 8.3 percent when it comes down to effectiveness microdosing do test right seems to be a more effective seems to be more effective than taking finasteride every single day. How can you maximize dutasteride's effectiveness while trying to microdose it as strictly as possible? And based on this study, it seems to be that three times a week will be the sweet spot. Because if you go two times a week, you notice that dutasteride will underperform compared to finasteride one milligram every day. Now, naturally, it would only make sense to use dutasteride either twice or three times a week over finasteride every day if the side effect profile between dutasteride and finasteride in such case would be at least similar or maybe even better in favor of dutasteride. So let's take a look at that. If we look at the sexual side effects, we can see that dutasteride twice weekly, there were two people who had the side effects, one person in dutasteride three times a week group and three people in finasteride once daily, 10%, 5% and 15% respectively. Decreased libido, two subjects in the dutasteride twice weekly, nobody in the dutasteride three times a week and three subjects in finasteride once daily group, 10%, 0%, and 15% respectively. Erectile dysfunction, one person in the dutasteride twice weekly, one person in dutasteride three times a week, and two people in finasteride once a day group. Decreased ejaculation, one person in dutasteride twice a week group, one person in dutasteride three times a week group, and two people in finasteride once daily, 5%, 5%, and 10% respectively. And breast enlargement was only reported in the dutasteride three times a week group where one person got gynecomastia. The testicular pain was only reported by one person in dutasteride twice a week and one person in dutasteride three times a week group. But here's why I think the side effect data could be skewed a little bit in this study. And that's what the scientists also admit in the discussion. And it would be that sexual problems reported in the study were relatively high compared with previous large scale studies. And this might be from different methods to collect data. Nocebo effect from risk warnings at informed consent are suspected to be another explanation. And also it doesn't seem very logical that the test right twice a week group would experience more of the sexually related adverse events like decreased libido, for example, whereas in the dutasteride three times a week, there was nobody with decreased libido. And we know, as with finasteride, also dutasteride, the higher dose you take, the more likely you will get side effects. That's why one milligram finasteride is safer than five milligram, and also 0.5 dutasteride twice a week is naturally safer from the side effect perspective than 0.5 milligram dutasteride every single day. And lastly, maybe one word of caution for anybody who is concerned with prostate, prostate cancer, and there is a prostate specific antigen test that you normally have to do for screening for potential prostate cancer. And if interpreting values from PSA for anybody who is on 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, your doctor needs to be aware of the fact that finasteride or dutasteride are able to lower the prostate-specific antigen values by about 50%, which is a lot. And that's why next time you are visiting your urologist for a regular prostate check, please mention it to him that you are taking finasteride or dutasteride because it's an important association to be made there.
so that the urologist can make a precise assessment and analysis of your prostate health. Now, personally, I think that Dutasteride doesn't have to be deployed, especially not early on when you are catching your hair loss relatively quickly. Finasteride is the go-to way to combat hair loss that is also backed by the FDA approval, which Dutasteride doesn't have. But in case you haven't seen results with Finasteride, your hair loss keeps worsening rapidly on Finasteride, and in such case, it makes sense to switch to dutasteride and if you are concerned with the side effects microdosing dutasteride twice or three times a week for the start seems like a good strategy